There we go. Okay. Thank you all for, for joining again. Um, if any of you have got any questions that haven't had a chance to use the link, please do, or you can just throw it in the chat now. It's probably better to throw it in the chat now. Use the chat box, kick it off. Someone will monitor it throughout. I'll look at it throughout, and we'll try and answer I'll, it. I'll get on. I'll monitor it. You get on at the end, yeah. Okay, so yeah, these are our monthly team talks. Found it much better doing it like this now, so we actually get you all to perhaps spare some time to come on. Like, even if it's for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is, get involved. We'll try and answer all the questions as quickly as possible. We will cover every single one that you do send in. Um, But anything that sparks conversation in you, you're going to see us go into a lot more depth than you would um, if it was just replying on a text quickly to you with the same question. We'll just go into way more depth in this situation. The good questions that come through anyway, we then save them and we're going to dive into them properly, creating videos for you. Um, so there's going to be more value coming in that sense as well. But yeah, thank you for making the effort to join. Um, I hope you're all doing well. We've already had a quick chat, but is everyone all good? Yeah, give us a thumbs up in the chat to kick it off. Thick as a yes, that's good. Okay, cool. So we've got a list of questions on our side. Um, should I share the questions or just keep it to ourselves and we'll go through them? What do you think? I just go through them. Is there? Just go through them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is yeah. there anyone you've seen, Tommy, that you want to start with? Um. Oh, look. I'm trying to get up so I can see the screen at the same time. Let's have a look. We've what had a lot come in, so. Yeah, I appreciate you all taking the time to go and ask a few questions. But the thing is, I know well, you you all speak to us on a daily basis, most of you. So you ask questions anyway, and everyone pretty much knows what's going on. So I know these are all questions you're thinking like outside the box. Like, what do I really want to know a bit more on, which is good. Um, there are some good ones in there, which I'm looking forward to going through. What about benefits of fasting cardio? That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Who's on the Stairmaster? <laughs> Someone's on the Stairmaster. <laughs> I'm sorry, someone's told you to do that. <laughs> yeah, so benefits of fasted cardio. That's a that's a really good one. So there's a debate all the time, isn't there? Of for fat loss, what's the best type of cardio? And we've done this in a team talk before. We covered covered a full presentation mm -hmm. on the benefits, but going head to head between the difference between fasted and you know, not fasted cardio, fed fed state cardio. Well, actually, first of all, let's get a poll going then. So on the chat box. Which one do you think is better for fat loss? Um, there's three options. So you can go with fasted cardio, fed cardio, or neither. No difference. <coughs> Wait in the chat and see what people say. Get an idea of the group. Mm. Cool. So it's a 50-50 between neither or fasted. No one's gone for fed state cardio. I'm going to shock you all now and tell you it's fed state. You've been doing it wrong your whole life. <laughs> so, right, okay. I'll give you a bit of um, a, you know, a description of fasted state cardio. So anytime really where you're, you know, haven't eaten for anything over like six to eight hours is, is what people usually define as fasted cardio. Obviously, most people tie that in then with after sleep because most people... We try to aim for six to eight hours of sleep at least. Um, so you're going to be in that state. Then if you haven't eaten a few hours before as well, you're going to be fasted technically. Um, but really what it what it means is your blood sugar levels are more than likely a little bit below baseline as well. So that's what fasted state is. So then you're going to be required to potentially call on stored energy rather than just rely on what's in or your blood sugars, you know, to be used as energy straight away. That's why people can say it promotes more fat loss because in that moment in time, you're potentially taking the energy from the fat stores, um, the triglycerides. So that's the argument for fasted cardio and for, you know, compared to being fed state, whereas in fed state cardio, you're going to be, your blood sugars may be potentially higher anyway. You may be literally having a bit of a pre work or snack like we give you and help you with. Um, so you're going to be, the, the the glucose is going to be there to be used. So the argument is logical. It, it's basically saying that why would you eat before cardio when you're trying to burn fat? You know, you want to use fat as energy instead. But as we know, the human body is an efficient machine. So although you may use the calories directly in that moment in time from fat, uh, from fat, then 
it may mean that uh, later on elsewhere, you know, it's going to balance over time. So that's why we tend to just say that it doesn't really matter because it does come down to energy balance over a prolonged period of time. So I would always say to people, I've seen Tommy, for example, he got extremely shredded and he was he was not even doing faster cardio in the end, were you? You were doing just post workout cardio, was it? Yeah, what? yeah. So I was doing post workout. I did start doing uh, faster cardio uh, just because I did enjoy it more in the morning, like feeling more active. Yeah. And then when I would train in, in the evening, I only had training to focus on. Yeah. Um, but what I found is the further I went into the fat loss phase, if I was to do my cardio fasted throughout the day, my hunger was just massive. Yeah. Um, and it was, it, it weren't great and it weren't optimal, as, as you say. So what I was doing then is I was like eliminating the fasted cardio and I was doing my training session, having my poor workout meal and then going on the Stairmaster. And I, I found that it, it didn't, it didn't benefit me more doing it fasted or, or fed um just the only benefit i found was i was i was less hungry throughout the day yeah there's a there's there's a lot of pros and cons to both isn't it like yeah yeah the reason to do faster cardio i would say there's lots of reasons so i just feel better like personally a lot of people feel better doing it fasted because you haven't got anything in your stomach and sometimes when you're working and keeping your heart rate elevated it feels better doing that without anything in your stomach potentially the other thing as well is it sets you up for a good day. It gets you a good routine. You feel better. You've raised your heart rate. You feel fully awake. You know, you've completely woken up and then you crack on with your day. If you're really, really performance focused when it comes to weight training, it's going to be, you know, less of a session needed in that time. So you're not impacting the session because you're doing the fasted cardio a well away. You know, you're trying to keep it away from that training window as much as possible. So Whereas you could be, if you're looking to optimize things, we know that if you're doing a weight training session, you want you, you want to bring your heart rate back to normal, first of all, before consuming your post-workout meal, but then you consume your post-workout meal. Um, but if you're doing your fasted cardio afterwards, not many people would have the time available to like, you know, perhaps like have the post-workout meal, sit down and then do the fasted cardio. Not many people are going to spend like three hours in the gym, four hours in the gym. Um but yeah, it just comes down to preference, and it comes down. It also comes down to um, yeah, what the time goal is. Time There's time so available. much, yeah, massive, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, to to wrap that one up, um, it doesn't matter for fat loss really. Where it does matter and where there's potential 1% gains in terms of fat loss is if supplements are in play as well. Um, mm -hmm. So if there are some certain supplements, which being totally honest, the ones that will have an impact on your fasted state and your ability to actually utilize fat for energy will be those that are illegal. So it, it wouldn't be anything that is worth doing either. It's still marginal in terms of if it's worth it. These are the types of, you know, drugs technically the bodybuilders would use. Um, so it's definitely not not something that we we like to recommend at all. It's not, it's not needed for fat loss. And you can get like completely skinned i don't use that word as a bodybuilding term but like you can lose all the fat that you've got naturally there's, so there's no need to do it the only thing it can do is potentially speed it up a little bit more um but yeah, yeah. fasted or fed doesn't matter energy balance over time is all that matters mm -hmm. okay cool another question oh um can you keep your strength when in a fat loss phase and how can you maintain it um so in terms of retaining strength in a fat loss phase, you you definitely can. Um, it is something that shouldn't drop off, especially in potentially the first four to five weeks where food is probably still pretty high anyway. Um, but it is one of those. It is person dependent as well, but the further the longer you do spend in an energy deficit the less energy you are going to have as well um and as body fat does come down i think it's a question that we covered on last week's uh well last week's um last q a that we did about keeping strength in a fat loss phase um like you definitely can especially in the initial part and the transition from like an improvement phase to a fat loss phase um but it's towards the back end that it can slowly drop off. But it's all about the mentality around it as well. Like I know a lot of yeah. people who 
as soon as they go from like an improvement phase to a fat loss phase, they're like, oh, I'm not going to be as strong. Or I'm going to decrease the weight I'm lifting today. Or I'm going to plan to go for one less rep. And if you're planning that in advance, you're going to reduce your strength. You're going to lose strength because you're going in there with um, the like um, not, not a great mentality around things. Like you still want to go into the gym as if you're in an improvement phase and still wanting to take progressions week in, week out. Um, like I know I've had boys with me who've got very lean and still week in, week out, they're taking progressions. Um, so it definitely can happen in terms of losing strength, but you can also retain it. It is the further, the longer you do bend in the deficit, I find is when strength slowly starts to drop off. Yeah. I think we covered that last team talk as well, didn't we? Like we went into, yeah. into that one and, and covered that in depth as well. So Girls, just from your perspective, have you noticed the same correlation with that? Because it's very like bro sciency in terms of the men. We we're almost conditioned through social media to think now the moment you step into a fat loss phase, you're gonna lose strength. Is that the same mentality the girls tend to have? I haven't found so, no. No. I know Helen shaking her head. No, actually, it's been kind of the other way around sometimes. Sometimes the girls are like a bit more come on I got this like and I think it is that mentality so yeah I don't know about Beth but how have you found found that it's all about mentality I think you need to to every single set thinking that you're you're gonna smash it no matter what do you know what I mean it's all about mentality I find yeah yeah you gotta have that self-belief regardless of whether you like you know I don't know I think it's I think it's, (laughs) it's, it's it's interesting because um with girls they are looking for that like i'd say 99 percent of the time when i speak to them on a call it's it's the toned look that they want right so Mm -hmm. when you explain to them that lifting weights is going to get them there and also you know reducing body fat they're chasing both those goals within that phase so i think they're more motivated than ever i agree that's that's Mm -hmm. probably why they are training harder during that phase potentially yeah yeah it's how we'd manage fatigue as well. Um, mm-hmm. Like obviously when, like as food comes down, re- recovered, recovery capacity also comes down as well. So potentially what you'd be able to recover from when you're pushing a lot of food or when you're in your improvement phase, as soon as potentially close to a thousand calories maybe has, has come off that, then the recovery demands are going to be higher. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just managing training volume. So potentially instead of doing three, you could do two um, and you'll still cause enough stimulus to, to cause muscle growth. Um, it is just one of those, like we don't want to reduce sets for the sake of reducing sets uh, just because you feel like you don't have the energy to. It's just making sure that we don't hit a fatigue wall. Um, like I've I've done it in the past myself. I just want to go in the gym and I want to just train when you're you're very lean. And all you do is you run into a massive fatigue wall where you start reducing performance and you, that's not what you want. Like reducing volume can definitely help as well as mm-hmm. body fat significantly comes down. Yeah, that's bang on. I, I just wanted to touch on a question. Sean just put into the group. You may have seen it. Um, but Sean's asked, are our training days, it, it, are our training day exercises put in order by yourselves to help certain muscle groups, or is it totally random? Only asking due to stations being busier lately and just needing to jump on something else in the meantime. Um, right, okay. I wanted to answer this quickly. Just, I did put like a bit of a sarcastic reply, just saying that we're sl- I'm insulted that you thought it might be random because we do take so much, <laughs> so much time to like work out the order of where we want your exercises to be and we discuss it as coaches as well massively like we have yeah. uh, when i say discuss as well it's borderline arguments right so we, <laughs> we we're going back and forth having huge discussions about the order how that should change as you as you progress through the phases as well in terms of the number of where that exercise is so yes ideally we would like you to follow them in order and for us to accurately measure progressive overload and see your progression week to week from exercise to exercise it has to be done in that order um but we know as well like we always talk about being realistic if the gyms are busier and some gyms you can't get on the machine that you want to get on then is it is it going to be more beneficial to wait 10 minutes just to get the machine in order probably not so in that circumstance 
depending on the the type of person you are and the goal that you've got and how serious you are about progression um i would probably even myself now i would move to just choosing the next exercise or yeah doing something very similar if i've got something mm-hmm. similar at hand um let me know your thoughts on that guys like what what would you tell like Shiv, what would you say to a client like that if they if they were in that situation and they couldn't get access to the machine in order yeah ex- exactly that to be honest um I, I literally had a conversation with one of the girls this week about that because yeah. the feedback um was that she was struggling to get all her exercises in the, the complete order yeah and I said you know being realistic we all have busy lifestyles some of us don't want to be like two and a half hours in the gym and you know you want to try and get your session done as as quick not as quick as possible but you know you want to get it done so that's why I said, did say that you know if you're doing sort of a tricep and bicep at the end of the session then do what do one before the other you know like try and not try and put like a hack squat in at the end or you know do you no, know what I mean course. try and yeah. have the yeah, similar yeah. sort of setup if you can't exactly hit the yeah. exercise in, the, in that order yeah. No. So yeah, that's why I'd, I would advise. That's bang on. We've got a few questions firing into the chat now. So as you guys have made the effort to turn up, I think it's only fair we answer these first, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Reese has fired in. Uh, what's the best way to make sure you're maintaining intensity over, over time in the gym? For example, as winter goes on and it's dark when you go to work and it's dark when you get home from work, um it can be more of a challenge and sometimes can be tricky to maintain intensity when trusting. So I'm going to be picky here with wording because we are with, with defining things, right? And intensity is something different, I think, to what you're talking about, which is more so motivation, I'd say. Because if you're on about external factors like the weather and the light of day and everything like that affecting you, then that's more from motivation, not potentially feeling like you want to do the thing, but you know it's required anyway. Um, so intensity in the gym is a different thing. It's a different measurement. So when we talk about intensity, you're talking about how close you're training to failure, um, what that last rep looks like, basically. So, yeah, there should be no reason why those external factors, when you look at it logically, should be affecting your ability to train to failure. So when you compare an intensity to weather, right? So it just it comes down to motivation, and that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the goal, so things to increase motivation, um, to make sure that you are training as hard and 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 making sure that you are staying consistent with turning up to the gym. It just comes down to goal setting, and I would say that comes down to making sure that you're not just thinking about you know the outcome goals, you're thinking about the action goals, which is what we talked about before. So outcome goals is the destination you want to be at, the long term, the short term goal. Um, even if it's a week from now, it's still technically an outcome goal. But action goals are things you can do and control, things you can take on a daily basis, things you can um, that that isn't going to be affected by external factors. So as long as you control those variables that nothing can affect, then you will over time compound and build momentum to keep going and stay motivated. So, yeah, I I, I think with that with that it's it's just a mindset thing and mm. I- yeah. I think discipline as well is a, is a big one as well because e- even us guys uh, as coaches like there'll be times where like our motivation to train may sometimes dip but we know it has to get done it's part of our day it's part of your guys day as well and just knowing that it's like that is our time where we space away our hour and a half that we go and train give it everything um and knowing that we've gone to the gym where potentially motivation wasn't there but the discipline has got us there um will leave you feeling far better than even if you wanted to go to the gym you gone and you left going to the gym when you didn't really want to you will probably leave feeling a lot more satisfied because two hours ago you probably didn't want to go um so yeah a lot it's a lot to do with discipline as well 100% yeah. Yeah, I think I think touching on that as well, because this is when you're talking about mindset psychology, um, uh, <laughs> you can go as deep as you want, really. But w- when it comes down to discipline as well, I think it's just being honest with yourself. So a lot of people aren't honest with themselves about the goals that they've got or the things they want to do. So how much does the thing you're chasing actually mean to you? Because if it meant everything, like if it was a life or death situation, you had to go to the gym tonight or you were going to die or your family's going to get shot. Like if you want to go there and get that extreme, you're going to go. Like you're going to go. So it's not the fact that you can't go or the fact that you don't want to go. It's 
it's just the fact that like the the um what's the word the consequences of you not going is not strong enough for you to go do you know what i mean yeah. so mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your head you've got to also not act on the way you feel in that given time so the short term you know few seconds decisions that you're making of like oh i'm not going to go tonight because that little bit of effort to go there and get warmed up and do the sets and everything like that and stay there for an hour is going to be hard but it's all about choosing your heart as well isn't it like how hard is that feeling is that worth it in the short term of, of going through that little bit of discomfort for an hour or doing something you particularly don't want to do or with that compounding over time with that mindset Where's that going to leave you? And how much pain are you going to have to endure then of being in, in a shape you're not happy with, carrying body mm -hmm. fat you don't want? And then overall, how does that affect your mood? How does it affect your relationships? It's like it's a dangerous game once you start allowing your feelings to dictate your actions. So mm -hmm. I think it's all about just making sure. I know we've really spiraled off that from that question here now. But winter is one of those times. People do go through seasonal moods as a whole, as a collective. So if you can make sure that, you know, you you do prioritize, be honest with yourself as well. Where is this on your priority list? Where are you on your priority list? Um, and then what's required for you to be your best self? So I think ticking the box for training at least four times a week for most people should be on there if you want to take care of yourself. So you've got to go there regardless of how you feel for others as well, to be your best self for others around you, people you care about um so yeah we got deep tonight but yeah that was uh i think that answers your question reese yeah what, what about this question slow maybe more videos or something on how to gain weight i know some people struggle with that who's asked who's asked that it's it's the questions got sent in all right and is there it's more videos or questions on how to gain weight well well <laughs> <laughs> well then what have we got coming up um are we allowed to announce it now? Because it's, it's getting announced on the weekend. Yeah, we can announce it now. We can announce we it now. It. Yeah, so we're going to be doing... Oh, do you want to announce it? No, you announced it. Okay. Um, we're we're, we're going to be doing a, a seminar on the improvement phase, okay? So we're going to be doing it just like we did before earlier this year. It's going to be a full day where it is going to be geared more towards... Um, This one is... It's definitely going to be geared more towards male, but feel free to come along because it'll teach you all about everything involved with the improvement phase, um, with pushing up in the best possible way the phase is needed to go through. Um, and also, we're going to be doing a bit of a workshop in between. as well. We're breaking it up. We're learning from the way we've set things up before. So a little bit of a presentation. Then we've got a workshop on training, and then we've got another presentation to finish. So yeah, that's gonna be something that we are gonna we are gonna be doing uh, within the early part of November, I think. Um, but we are planning stuff as well specific for the women too. So yes, you can come to this. Um, it is gonna be like I said, more geared towards men because they are the ones looking to gain weight, looking to gain muscle massively, um, and be as optimal as they can with it. But I know the girls have got a lot planned as well, so don't you worry about that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's Josh in the chat. Josh Evans has joined. Um, <laughs> hi. He's put in the group now. Um, has anyone else? I think there's, we've got a lot of questions what, written down. But is what, anyone... what about any tips on how to eat more food and not feel full? Uh, they find cutting fat easier. Um, I'm the same. I like, I, okay. I, I, I was speaking to you, Claire, about it, weren't I? Like, I much prefer being in a fat loss phase. Um, then pushing a lot of food. Um, and what what I find when food is getting pushed high is just giving yourself time to eat. Um, I know it sounds very basic, but I see a lot of people saying they're having pro problems with digestion or they're not hungry at all. Like it gets to a point where like if you're pushing food for a long time as well, hunger won't be there. It is just a case of like you do potentially you, you will just have to to eat the food in order to to reach your goal if that is to mm -hmm. to put on uh body weight in order to build muscle um but in terms of like how to not feel full it's pretty vague because you get a point where like no matter what you do you're not gonna feel it like you you won't feel hungry um some, some stage you will um, but when you are pushing a lot of food, hunger is going to drop off. But it's the little things that you can help in between. What I found helped me was 
meal timings. So like instead of like eating my first meal at like nine o'clock one day, 10 o'clock the next, eight o'clock the next, having a set structure. So you know what time you have your meals, eating either like at a desk or at a table um, massively helps as well. The amount of times I've heard of people who are like cooking food, uh, but also eating, eating a meal at the same time, it's going to be harder to di- digest that meal as well. But what a lot of people also do um, is they could have a meal and then straight away then they're just behind a desk. Um, what I found helped me massively is if I was to have a meal, just go in for like a five minute walk. It doesn't have to be like doing 5K steps, but going for a little break where we go for, for a little walk um, it definitely helps to digestion as well. But there's a lot of other things that can help. There's supplements that you can use, but supplements would be the last resort. We have to get our eating habits uh, in play first prior to adding in any GDAs, any sort of supplements that would help benefit. Um, but yeah, but yeah, because we were speaking about as well, weren't we, about about, um, about veg, about some people in like an improvement phase will actually eliminate like veg because they think that it's just... Yes, they're all calories, and sometimes it can be a lot of veg. But sometimes people think that by removing veg, their appetite is going to be higher. When there's studies actually shown that keeping veg in can also improve your hunger and improve digestion because of the fiber and everything. Mm-hmm. So I know a lot of people, I can hold my hands up and say it myself, like when food was getting pushed up, I wouldn't have like veg on like all my meals or the meals I was supposed to because mm-hmm. uh, you just get, you can sometimes get in the habit of it. But as soon as veg is added back in, I do see a massive benefit from a micronutrient standpoint, but also from a digestion standpoint as well. Yeah, no, you've, you've covered every part of that then. And um, that was, that was really, really good. Perfect. Reese just asked. Just a quick, yeah, yeah. on, on fluid calories yeah, should, yeah. Should, shall i speak about one fluid i know there's a lot of fluids but uh, single if we are going to consume uh liquid calories we want to make this from single ingredient and what i mean by single ingredient is something like apple juice orange juice the these sort of fluids are a single ingredient that is they they do massively help don't get me wrong but it, whether it's better to, to eat the, the carbohydrate than drink the carbohydrate, personally, I think you should be eating them first and like fluid, like liquid calories should be last. Uh, but, they yeah, do... but is, is that what he's on about? Or, or does he mean like... Uh, is is it an easier way to take, take our fluid calories an easier way? I'm guessing are, like is liquid calories just an easier way to get in calories? Yeah, but is he on about blending your food? Are you, Reece, are you on about blending food, like real food up, like oats and berries oh, and oh, banana? No, I, I hadn't thought about blending, no. I was just oh, thinking yeah, them. I was going to say, that's, that's way down. <laughs> that's another there. level, that is. That's another yeah, level. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I think it's... Blending just... chicken, that's when you know you're... you're, you're <laughs> but yeah, like, I, I would definitely opt for if... Um, if you are trying to to get in calories and appetite isn't there. Food is very high. Um, I personally don't see anything wrong with adding in some form of single ingredient uh, liquid, like like a juice. Mm-hmm. Um, but like things like milk, like yes, once again, I know a lot of people have been drink like drunk milk to get calories in. But the reason why you're drinking calories is because your appetite isn't there. If your appetite isn't there and you drink two liters of milk at two o'clock, the chances then of you having a big meal or the meal you're supposed to have in the evening is going to be even slimmer because we've just drunk two liters of of milk, which is very thick and going to take longer to digest. And in fact, that's that's the purpose of of single ingredient juices is they have no fat. Uh, It is just pure carbohydrate. So it's like having Mm -hmm. an intra drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Obviously, the the thing that you got to be careful with there is like there's this. It's just the spike in in blood sugars as well. That you, yeah, definitely. So trying to when you're pushing out food as well, trying to make sure the meals are balanced and you're having some fat sources with everything because you're gonna mm-hmm. your carb load is gonna be heavy anyway. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, some people are maybe going through and enjoying that problem right now, but a lot of people as well in a fat loss phase listening to this like, oh, I wish I had that problem. <laughs> Can't yeah. eat enough. 
I think the next move for Reese is add in some apple juice. <laughs> yeah, that might be by the sounds of it. Um, any other question popped up, Tommy, that you've seen that you like? Um, so or girls have you spotted any? Um not from the chat, no. Best supplement for muscle growth. I could go on for days. I've got a I've got a question as well. Go on, Joe. Go on, Joe. Hiya. Um it kind of links in because my mother's got a question. She sat next to me, by the way. I can um, see that, yeah. so basically. <laughs> As I'm going heavier on RDLs, etc., at what point do we consider using a belt? Um, I, I feel like I should know this, but I don't. Mm. And kind of links in with my mother's issue. She's got a hernia, and should she be wearing a belt? Right. Okay. I'll. I'll. Do you want me to take this one? Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Okay. So, right. Well, we could get Josh on. He's a bit of an anatomy expert, do you? But um, Josh is there. I know he's listening. I think he's on move to the moment. But if he wants to correct me on anything I say, then I feel free to because he's he's very good with what he knows about anatomy. But right with with your um, the human body, right? We're we're capable of picking things up and putting things down without needing a belt. So that's the reason why we don't like to make sure that everyone has to have a lifting belt for performing such a basic movement that we've done since we were born. We want to actually train that up as well, specifically when for the, for the goal of that exercise and why it's in your program is to cause hypertrophy for the majority of the posterior chain. So that back of your spine, the erectors, the lumbar, um, the glutes, the hamstrings, everything down there, right, is all what we're trying to target. So why would we then potentially use a tool that is going to protect that from working to its highest capacity? Do you know what I mean? Like we want to expose those muscles. And it's the same reason why when, when we're training, we're trying to fight our body's natural reaction of, we were talking about it earlier, when you're doing a press, for example, your body's natural reaction as you start to fail and it starts to hurt is it wants to bring in other muscles because your your, yeah. your body doesn't know that it's purposely putting itself under that load. It wants to survive. So it'll do anything it can to use anything you've got to push that thing away because it's a survival mechanism, right? So with the, the deadlift RDL, for example, we've got our own internal belt. When you look at the anatomy of, of the transverse abdominis, right? It wraps all the way around from the spine, all the way around your stomach, right? Literally, the muscles run, the fibers run in that way. It's what allows you to do, um, what's the word, rotation of the spine, so of the upper torso as well. So that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're exposing that and then utilizing that muscle. So indirectly, we're training that up and making sure we're getting a strong core, which, as we all know, is, is essential, right? It's the foundation for what we build everything else on. So... The whole goal of this exercise is in there for that reason, to, to expose that and train that to failure. Not only that, it's technically safer than using a belt because what a belt will do is it will assist you, right? Because it'll allow you to create more in, intra-abdominal pressure, which is going to protect the spine, but you've already got that muscle there if you train it. But it's going to then allow you to, to use more load, right? Which, as a powerlifter, I come from a powerlifting background, that's why they all use them because you can lift more weight. But technically, if you took that belt away, would you still be able to do that same lift? Probably not. So what does that mean? That means that we're using a belt, a tool to assist us to use more load. So there's no more load going through our body that we technically aren't ready for. We're not we're not prepared to handle. So if someone literally took that belt off you in that second, you'd fail, right? More than likely. Um, so there's a time and a place to use belts, right? So going then to Joanne's example, where what we would do is we would use definitely something of where that hernia is to make sure that it is being packed of some sort. So it's not going to be pushed out, right? Because again, intra-abdominal pressure is going to push everything out and we don't want that hernia to be pushed out any further. So ideally, what I do, I've got a hernia myself, right? And it's at the top of my, um, I say six pack, I haven't got a six pack. It's at the top of my, <laughs> where, where my six pack should be, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Above so, my six again. pack. Yeah, right. Okay, above your six pack as well. Yeah. So just yeah, above just your. Yeah, just below. Mine is um from operations, so right. it's like in the cesarean area. So it's you know it's, it's a couple of inches that's really weak. So when I find myself like doing um, glute exercises and that, it raises yeah. a mm. lot. Right. So yeah. that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, should I wear something like a support vest, not so much a belt. Yeah, you but can like get yeah. A softer yeah. 
turn just to hold it in. So because sometimes it makes you feel quite sickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's a uh, it's an unusual feeling. So yeah. it's, some exercises it should have changed for me because I think no, <laughs> it, it don't work. You know. Is, is there anything but, uh, that's is there anything that's causing that intra abdominal pressure? You know. Yeah. So it'll push everything out. Uh, that's what it'll that's what it'll do. So yes, I I would definitely recommend it. I've got um I'll send you a link after this. Oh there's yeah. A, okay. There's a belt you can get this. It's larger than a normal belt, so like the, the yeah, because it's high, it. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so it's much higher, um, but it's really mm. comfortable as well, and it does give you support. Like it gives you support anyway, so that would be good. The other thing to avoid with hernias is anything really that when you're when you're under load, so you're already creating some sort of pressure. Anything that then yeah. involves rotation, so something like right. a dumbbell row for example we could look at potentially making sure they're not involved and stuff like that yeah um yeah more so unilateral work you know um mm -hmm. yeah so what was the question anyway it was to do with the belts for now was jordy made how heavy <laughs> yeah jordy going heavy so yeah um there's, a time, and a, there's a time and a place right if if what you love doing is lifting heavy um, mm. then obviously that depends on the preference of why you're training do you know what I mean so maybe for the top set you could put the belt on see what you can do but then for a back off make sure you're still training your human body alone nothing else um, and making sure the techniques bang on you're in control throughout the full range of a, of a movement of an RDL or a deadlift um, but you can still have fun then you know I would call it fun uh, where you're trying to put a belt on and see how much you can lift for a proper top set you know Um but yeah, that's, that's... I gave I gave my belt away to my brother anyway. But um, more power lift running more business be honest. More power lifting for you, George. No, no, but but you know, there's a there's, if you did want to go down that route, you could. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Say. We don't we don't say like no belts ever. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then another example with a squat. So the opposite, really. The lower back is something that can fatigue first with a lot of people when you're putting a lot of weight on a squat or even just weight on a squat for a top set. And it can make your lower back fold if it's weaker than what your legs are. The last thing we want with a squat is for something else to influence the failure of a movement that's not the targeted muscle. So we would then use a belt to assist the upper body, the back, keeping it upright for longer. And then hopefully the legs is what's going to fail first, which is what we're trying to target. So that's why it's a tool that we use depending on, you know, what we're trying to target mainly from that exercise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have got more questions. Um, We will keep it short anyway, because we don't want them to, we don't want to scare people away with our long sessions anyway, but we'll, what have we got? I, d I did see when you're how to peak for a shoot or event. I hear often about flatness using the depth, during the depths of a cut. What's the strategies around the peak? So I think this is a bit more obviously like um, physique, very focused, a lot yeah, to do with like stage focused. and photo shoot. Um, but I want to touch on the word flatness because I hear it a lot. Um, and it's something that is to be expected. Uh, like people think, Oh, I'm feeling flat. I'm feeling flat. If you're in a fat loss phase and your your objective is to get extremely lean, um, or to get lean, you have to run flat. It, in my opinion, like you're going to, you're in an energy deficit. Cardio is going to be pushed up. You're going to be flat regardless. It's just managing all the aspects around that in terms of training and nutrition. Um, but it's just about being aware. In my opinion, I'm not sure whether you're the same, Clau, um, about people just understanding. If you feel flat, like, what what do you associate with being flat? Is it not getting pumps in the gym? Is it just feeling depleted? But also then realizing that it is to be expected for the next stage, which is on the how to peak, which I think would be a, something separate in total, Clau, in it. Like, we could probably go in for ages on terms of how to peak. But in my opinion, you have to run flat to peak. Like you have to be very lean to, to be able to peak a physique. And that is to do with just washing off fatigue um, and, and slightly implementing things, maybe like a high day, two high days, maybe three high days, maybe 
a free meal, carb loading, fat fat loading. There's so many ways. Now like, you'll know more as well in terms of like how how to peak. But you you can't put a finger on what is going to peak well with me. What's going to peak well with with someone like Clow? Because I may fill up after one day. Clow might take two days, three days because he's got more muscle mass. Yeah. When it comes to peaking, the more muscle that you are holding, the more you have to fill. Because that's what you're doing. You're 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 replenishing glycogen. So if someone gave me um like calories and macros to 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 peak on and give Cloud the exact same, they ain't gonna do the same for Cloud because he's got a little bit more muscle than me. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. <laughs> but but yeah, all can do with muscle and 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 how you react. And that is the beauty of um phase planning because I feel as if when you phase plan and when things are done, I would say perfectly, but nothing's ever perfect. When when you can map out a time timeline and get someone if if they want to get very lean for a photo shoot and and you want to peak them for the photo shoot, if you can get them ready or if you can be ready two or three weeks prior, you can do you can try out things it's like two high days. In, in you holding a lot of body fluid around around your midsection and then your abs go soft but because you've got that timeline you've got two weeks left it's not detrimental to gonna like the end package it's just going to take like a day or two to wash that off realize that hasn't worked right what can we do now? What, what else can we do mm -hmm. um and I think that I'll, I'll i'll expand on that just because you've you've nailed that right um but just talking about the flat thing so i won't go into peaking because like tommy said it's a whole like you could do a full course on it, let alone one just yeah, presentation. Yeah. Um, and the other ball ache with it, right, is exactly what Tommy said. You you can trial something and it can work really well, or it may not work really well. But the problem is, it, it, I can't remember. I was watching something before, and it was to do with like it, it was sciencey to do with like atoms spinning. But like the moment you measure something, once that thing is being measured, it's it's now changed. Do you know what I mean? For you to for you to do something and try out something, yes, you may get results from that one thing that you just did, but you, you're no longer working with the same thing. It's not. It's like the product changes. Do you know what I mean? The moment you change, the moment you try out something with the way you look, you've now impacted that for the future anyway. So two weeks out, you could be ready after sixteen weeks of dieting or twelve weeks of dieting. Um, then you try out something. But now that thing has changed because now the person you're trying to peak two weeks later has only been in the deficit for two weeks. Do you know what I mean? So like they'll react completely differently. So that's the problem with peaking and show to show and everything like that. It completely changes. But flat, to answer that question, I'll define what flat is for, for everyone in here to benefit from this. So flat is essentially just glycogen stores being depleted so much so that you can see it visually with the muscle not being nowhere near as full just look at the balloon example you know if you take the air out of a balloon which is carbohydrates glycogen you take the air out the muscle all of a sudden looks soft and bubbly and may look like you put fat on but you haven't right and it's why when people go initially into a fat loss phase they they can you can feel it sometimes you feel softer you don't feel as hard to touch. You don't get pumps in the gym that fill out as much. They don't last as long. So you get pumped up, but then it goes pretty quick. Um, so that's what flat is. But there's a rule of thumb in, in the whole bodybuilding industry that you have to get flat to lose the fat. Like suck it up and just get on with it. And then towards the end, like Reese said, your body becomes way more responsive. The moment you smell a carb, you fill up, you get veins. You know, it's like very responsive, but still you haven't got that glycogen store there. So you don't stay pumped for long you don't stay that look for long unless then you come to peak in which is what that's all about and getting the look primed for whatever it is you've got planned um and and a, a, a good way to actually measure like and visually assess like us obviously being like your guys coaches um seeing how you look in the morning and then also seeing how you look with food in you and with a pump is a very good understanding if you look flat like i know with with you ryan like with your checking shots they're fasted but you also send me post-workout photos as well so sometimes there's there's the fasted shots i can see and also the the post-workout shots i can see as well and it's a good way to see how someone can just transform a sort of look with some 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 food in them and with with a pump and with fluid um it's a good way to to sort of measure it when you are 
approaching the final few weeks for an event or for a shoot. Uh, it, it, it is a good way to see how you're looking fasted, but then also fed with a pump on as well. Because if you to just go off the fasted photos, like when you're going to do a photo shoot, for example, you're not going to be fasted. So it's hard to judge. Do you know what I mean? Like the more visuals we have, the better. Like Ryan sends me post-workout shots all the time. And I love it because I know how he's looking on it. And on, I know how he's reacting on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And the more photos that I see, especially when boys are like coming into like the gym, better. And I sometimes ask for it like after a push pull in a leg session every week, just to see how how they are looking. Yeah, just I'm gonna answer Kane's group uh, question to the group because they've all seen it anyway. But yeah, no, that was that was perfect. Tom nailed that one. Um, do do we prefer clients to send uh, fasted check ins or do we prefer post workout? Now, fasted is always the most reliable because. You can get it done on the check-in date, regardless of if you're in the gym or not. Um, and post-workout is one of those things that, like we said, we'll ask for, and we've got no problem with you sending them over anyway. You know, if you want to send more photos, the better. So, yeah, the more we get, the more data. It's the same with everything. You can make a better decision going forward. Um, but, yeah, girls, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. do you ever have a problem with girls complaining that they don't get enough pumps in the gym or they, they, they're not feeling it or flat? I don't I, personally know. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm just not yeah, pumped I'm today. Flat. I'm not not pumped. Yeah, no, that was not, Yeah, we were just no, gonna answer, yeah. answer Ryan's question as well, to be fair, because I know he's got he sent the question in. But um yeah, so I think we'll finish it on this question. And unless, unless anyone, has any of you in this chat right now got any questions you want to throw in? <clears throat> anyone with the mics on or anyone want to throw it in the chat? We we're gonna do our last question now, um, and then yeah we'll 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 end it there then. So yeah, it's been fifteen minutes already. It's mental fifty five zero. Well, okay. So last question. Um, I will go around our our coaches as well and ask ask individually for each one to give a little snippet on this. But basically, someone's asked as coaches, can you talk a little about how you have applied the strategies you employ in the gym, focus drive, mindset, motivation, accountability to professional goals in business. And by business, it just means work. It means, you know, how yeah. we operate with 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 dealing with everything that we do. Um, and hopefully this will help you with, with managing your own work then around the gym as well and everything like that. So, yeah. I'll, yeah, Shiv, do you want to take it first? Yeah, I can do. Bit, like, um, focus, drive, mindset, motivation, accountability. Oh, this... So there's so much I want to say. So I'm just going to say two things, I think, um, because I could go on forever on this. I love this question. But yeah, like consistency is number one, you know, with training, with anything, I think is the top thing, because if you're consistent with, for example, let's use a thing for us about posting content. That's for example, you need to be consistent. The same with going to your sessions. You need to be consistent in order to receive that reward or to get back what you're looking from and for me personally it's it's pushing me mentally and self-belief so for example when I'm training you know like years ago I probably didn't think I could do the stuff I can do now but by doing it constantly and thinking no I can do that I can do that it's giving you that self-belief and that confidence which then will relate to business and you know your life in general really so yeah they're the my two top things love that perfect beth yeah i think the massive thing is like long-term gratification as well in it like you go to the gym you 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 go on for your session you ain't gonna get massive by the end of it you it's something that needs to be applied in the long term to get those long-term results mm. and it's like all about compound and then small things as well like obviously if you go into a session you don't fancy it you've got to know that in order to get to where you want to be you need to do the things you don't want to do for the long term to get mm. that success that you are chasing uh because nothing worth having comes easy like do you know what I mean and it's it's more rewarding than when you know you've worked hard for something when you actually get it yeah yeah and it's another thing as well like where is the destination as well like if within fitness everyone's going to relate to this like you think oh i'll be happy when i get to this point or this point to the other and you're never actually happy really are you so it's, it's 
it's a point where you're really selling the dream to everyone here now <laughs> no as in like you've got to get you've got to have that mindset where you're constantly striving for better you know yeah, yeah. and that everyone is in fitness do you know what I mean they're always going into the gym looking to better themselves uh, and there's no end to that really is there because there's always room to develop in all aspects with the education within fitness within how you look and, and just mentally as well mm-hmm. no, yeah. that's, good. that's good yeah so how does that apply just out of interest to you and work then me yeah well it's like see maybe i'll spend a day doing like boring mundane tasks that i don't actually find very fun to do but i know i have to do for the long-term reward mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah okay cool yeah and you should same question too like how, how did what you say apply to the the work that you do with the consistency thing um I suppose it's similar to Beth like you have to be consistent even even in the stuff that you're not a massive fan of yeah because it's the boring even, work you call it, isn't it yeah I call I call it the boring work it's the things you've got to get yeah done that you know you should get done that you don't want to get done that's going to give you the biggest reward yeah. yes and like doing that over time I think so or even sometimes when you know you have spare time and you're thinking oh I could really sit down like I'm tired I really I really don't want to read this I really don't want to do this but you make yourself do it because you know that's gonna that consistency is gonna help you you know um and with confidence and and self-belief that kind of stuff I think it's just important in life it it will it will give you that I don't know how to explain that yeah and that like um that like power in a way to like know that you know you're smashing yeah I suppose yeah I love that go on Tommy you know you want to take this one no, no. How are you, you such know, a machine? How are you such? A, how are you up? Explain to everyone how you were up at four in the morning after just going to bed at two p.m. two a.m. <laughs> like go Mate, on, Dave, That's you every story in the morning. You got give, to us, the give us the secret. Come on, give us the secret. No, no. In in, in to the question, I I always go by walking the walk before talking the talk. Um, it was. I've had it like ingrained in me for for years. Like before I started coaching, I felt like I had to to do a lot within my own physique development before I could then tell people to do it. Um, like I get a lot of people coming to me who want to get extremely lean, want to get like very good condition for for a holiday or for a photo shoot, for example. And if I didn't know how to, if I didn't know that feeling, couldn't provide that emotional support. Um, then I don't think the result would be as good as good as they are. Like I know what it takes to get in ridiculous condition, but I also know what it takes on the other end of the spectrum when you're pushing a lot of food, but still managing good work life in terms of like still being able to manage everything to do with work, but also prioritize physique as well. So you've got your you've got work and your physique. Um and in terms of like the strategies that it's like helped with my work with work it's just the understanding like I don't think there's anything that will improve your mo- your knowledge more around physique development physique development until you actually do it um like when I done the the 20 week prep for the photo shoot I learned more about myself in them 20 weeks than I have in the four years of me doing coaching um and Yes, it was hard. It was a struggle. Klaus seen it firsthand as well when I came out of it on like the struggles and the battles that I did have. But I said to Klaus, I, said, I wouldn't change it for anything. I feel as if I went through every struggle that potentially someone could go through. And I'm happy for it. Like at the time, don't get me wrong, like, it, weren't, it weren't the best. It weren't ideal. But if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. Because I, I'd know what to expect if potentially people are going down that route i know when potentially you can put the foot down and be like right you you something is happening um and i feel as if definitely walking the walk um it, it massively improves your knowledge around all aspects of, of anything because like how in my opinion how can you tell someone to do something if you haven't done it and you can't provide that emotional support i know with some people for example they it doesn't matter to, to them in that in that sense but me morally i just feel like i've got to do it first i've got to do it i totally agree with that i i got to show that i can do it it's pretty similar with you and and physique now like when you came out of bodybuilding you you went so into business like didn't train that much didn't track nutrition that much 
but still managed to maintain a good physique because things were still in track. Yeah. So it's like when you have clients, like you'll know how to deal with stuff like that with people who work 23 hours a day uh, and still want to prioritize their, their physique as well. Like, yeah. you know, it, it can't be done because you've done it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And back when you were in your bodybuilding days, if someone said to you, oh, I can only sleep four hours, I can't do cardio, I can't meal prep, can I get in shape? You probably might have said no. Because yeah, but, that's the piece that you had yeah. around bodybuilding. Like you have to have a set structure, but you you shifted that. You're you're so focused with business now, and you know that you can you can do both. Yeah. And that's why the Dubai shred is in full swing, son. Hundred percent. Six weeks Bible is going well. Um. But yeah, yeah. no, that, you, you've you've nailed that. I love everything you've all said. Like the walk and the walk is a massive thing that's started to really frustrate me with a lot of gurus that we see on, on social media these days that haven't done the thing that they're selling. But anyway, um, <laughs> if I was to go over like that, the question sums it up for me anyway. So it says, can you talk a little about how you apply the strategies you employ in the gym, focus, drive, mindset, motivation, accountability, everything mentioned there in the question is the skills that you learn by going through these phases with us by going on your own physique journey. Those skills are invaluable and are required in everything you do in life and are transferable skills. So that is the thing anyway that you, you need like as a, as a human to develop, to, to be and to thrive in this life. Um, but when you're talking specifically about what has transferred and had the biggest impact in business for me, um, it's been the time horizon in which you think in. So that's the biggest thing. So what I mean by that is if I was standing outside now with an advertisement board saying, I can get you fitness results, you know, I can get you into the shape, the genuine dream shape, the dream body that you that you want. And I and they ask me, how long is it going to take? And I say 10 years. How many people do you think are going to sign up? Right? That's the time horizon I'm on about. I've been training for 10 years. You know, to get to this position, it's taken me, and, and as comfortable as I am with all the knowledge I've, uh, that I've I've acquired over time, it's taken me 10 years. That's the skill I've learned. So it's thinking in a different time horizon. So with business, I now think in, in a much longer time frame. Everything we've just done with regards to, you know, the whole bin the scares movement, that's a 10-year play. It's a 10-year plan. So when we even launched it, we weren't going uh, along with the whole thing of, oh my God, I hope this is going to be an overnight success, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's literally like, we believe in this, so we're going to do it and we're going to run with it for 10 years. And 10 years down the line, I'll ask myself if I think it's working or not, or if it's time we pack it in. Do you know what I mean? So it's that mindset shift that I wouldn't have had before if I haven't had been taught it by this and then learning it through business as well, that it actually really is even more so um, impactful in that like you look at the longest lasting businesses or the the with the most age and it's it's some i believe it's an indian company that's been going for over 1000 years or something like that right literally been passed down generation to generation so you think like that sort of time horizon is what something amazing it needs to be um invested in terms of how much time it needs to be invested to make something great so if you're talking about your own physique most people I speak to, yes, you can get the results you want in probably six months. Um, let, let's just say you're going to be six months older anyway. You might as well be there in the shape you want to be in. So that's the, mind, <laughs> the mic drop moment. I think we leave it on there. So everything is possible. Everything is possible. Every, every single body you see out there, like it's been achieved. So you can achieve it. It's just a case of putting in the time and then having the tools that you need to understand of how to get there. And that's where we come in. So, yeah, you're in the right place. I think that's a good way to leave it. Does anyone Definitely. got any questions you want to finish on? No? We're going to...